Welcome to Winternomics TV. Your stream will begin shortly. Welcome to Winternomics TV. Your stream will begin shortly.
Welcome to Winternomics TV. Your stream will begin shortly. Loading in five. Welcome to Winternomics TV. Your stream will begin shortly. Loading in five. Welcome to Winternomics TV. Your stream will begin shortly. Loading in five.
What up, what up? What it do? Back again. Extended hiatus there, Mr. Friday Show. Hope you guys had enough intel to keep you safe through the end of last week. A little bit crazy week there. We talked about it going into that week that uh, we had an insane amount of red events. So it was likely going to be a crazy week. Back and forth, could, you know, get the market could send in both directions. And it kind of did. You know, it was pretty vicious. Um, can we look at Oxy, USDT? Um, yeah, we try to check out FTT, the news of the day. So you guys saw CZ sent uh, sent them running for the fucking uh, for the corners. Um, I gotta say that dude Sam in FTX is just. I mean, the more you listen to that guy talk, he just comes off like a fucking clown. Um, I don't know. I think CZ, you know, did that publicly to probably give the market a warning that that guy could be like the next fucking you know Celsius or type of problem. I thought it was interesting because you know at the at the kind of like level of the dumpage he did publicly. He could have done that OTC and not made the market aware of it. Um, if you guys have saw that conversation, you know, wanted to do stuff, but he's like, you could just kind of like, you know, sell it all to me OTC and not make a huge market impact. CZ's not stupid. He uh, he made that market impact on purpose because he wanted the whole plan to fucking know something's wrong inside FTX. So, um, yeah, I would I would definitely say where there's smoke, there's probably fire. And uh, seeing CZ run the fuck out of there is probably worth you paying attention to it, you know. If you don't have to have too much capital on FTX right now, I wouldn't I wouldn't stay there. I'd kind of pay attention to that. Um, you know, CZ gave the heads up that they ate it, you know, they didn't pay attention the last time they saw a warning signs on the wall with Luna. And you don't want to see him fucking uh, make a comparison to anything to fucking Luna with that. So, you know. Um, you know, uh, Clemen, it's, uh, which exchanges? You're in Europe, I think. I think I, I know who you are. I think you're from my room. Um, what you guys have access to versus what the U.S. has access to is real different. Uh, I personally like trading on the DEXs a lot. Um, you know, that just kind of it actually feels a lot better than the panic of which exchange I got to rip my money out of. But um, I think, you know, I think Finex is still, you know, um, used by a lot of people, whether you believe it or not. The whales are still in Finex and a lot of people still use it that are not in the United States. Um, but I really can't tell you. They're all kind of like a ticking time bomb. It feels like, you know, uh, FTX just looks like they got a lot weirder shit going on than most. But, I mean, the fake SIPC insurance and stuff like that, like, he's been caught in a lot of weird shit. But I think some of your older exchanges that have, you know, stood the test of time are probably, like, your safer bets right now. But they're busy handcuffed in America, so we can barely touch anything. So we're starting under 100 still. Then uh, a couple minutes into the show start. Probably a little ahead of time since motherfuckers are used to us like starting at 8.30. We're trying our best to get our um, pre-market prep and, uh, you know, um, show design and stuff done by 8. It's just like getting the full sentiments where the market's at and then getting a chance to do design all in like front of like where like the USA begins to come online. It kind of like puts a small window to like, you know, figure where shit's at. Um, <clears throat> but anyways, if you guys couldn't tell, it's the return of the OG. The original Winonomics hoodie. I don't rock this bitch like since like Florida, if y'all don't realize it. I haven't had it in the show forever. So if I bring it out of the closet, don't take that too far. Um, so 105 now I see. Still say it's a light show open for having been on Friday and the uh, market's been pretty wild since then. Um, so let's take a look at some things. Oh wait, wrong screen. <laughs> um So Friday session, since we talked about it, uh, let's see, last time we were on the show was the second. So we tell you guys to pay attention to this situation. Quick, quick, did it work? Yeah, there it goes. And this was a possibility, right? We're watching it here. You have, and this is always the scenarios you have. I know I put this trend line, this guy, in to properly draw the angle of it, but this is like the potential bear flag and the lower res bull flag, that's kind of always the predicament you're always in in the market, right? And here you've got like a bull flag like this, possibly a bear flag like that. The market being like an interwoven fractal waveform means that you have like, these are the, po the binary possibilities that are always available. The two different resolution bull and bear flags are always in front of you at any given moment. So when we talked about it, like, you know, the pump was pretty extended from this, um, this beginning squeeze, this intervention that created the fifth biggest short squeeze and then we had a good line in the sand here to pay attention to if he could actually rotate this flag or if he managed to fucking, you know, rotate the angle of this flag, this was likely the scenario. So um, you got exactly the fucking like wave down that you could get from here. And so now we want to watch what he does as he bounces within the gap levels. 
So we're back inside of this thing and we have that on this chart, 30 minutes. So right over to, where did I write him? Am I retarded? Didn't I have that on here? I feel like I had the gap written on this chart, don't I? I'm really certain I have those, those fuckers written on one of these charts, bro. This isn't right. Am I crazy? Yeah, what the fuck? Oh yeah, there it is. I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? Sorry, <laughs> been off air for one day. Don't know what's going on with my charts. Okay, yeah. So our gap ranges, right? The one, two, and three gaps. We're right now sitting on the base of this range over here, right? The third gap range down. And that range is also the rotation from the summer bottom. Um, when you go right here, this rotation here in the summer low, right where you're at, that's pretty much your low point rotation, your retest, gap three is basically that level. And that's where you're at. So it's a pretty key gap level and you're bouncing a little bit up off of it right now. So we either flag inside of here, standard gap two, and then continue the wave down towards possibly it's checking in at the very low. So that's kind of like you're watching for. Now you guys know we always talk about that pattern. So now that this has happened, right, how to mentally prepare for what's possible going into this week. So a lot of our bad news is off the table. Our VIX is kind of like languishing down this angle. If he rotates, we want to be aware of it because we're still in fucking deadly territory, right? So this pattern shows up everywhere, right? We see this uptrend angle, price goes across it, and it can totally rotate and go back up and change the trajectory of this angle, right? That's how prices rotate through resolutions of time. All right, prices go up in one resolution of time, people see a correction, they go, oh my God. People who fucking flip out and start shorting this, walk into a fucking uptrend in another resolution, and the uptrend line that was here does this, right? So as price unfolds over time, that's the mind fuck of it when you don't have context, people lose track of where they are and what resolutions, and this is how most people get fucked up when they have a good idea but mistime it. So we look at the VIX right now, and he could do that. He can be an uptrend in one resolution, and he's continuing a downtrend in another resolution. And if he buzz turns this shit over, we have to pay attention to that. But till then, we pay attention to the trend he's in right now, right? So the S&P 500, go back to him, that's kind of your situation. Has this motherfucker rotated a bear flag to head towards new lows and continue what the larger rotational bear flag is and go back down to test his 2B, or is he changing angles to head towards a long-term downtrend and going in a different resolution of time? That's a fucking lesson all in an analysis. I hope you motherfuckers got that. Did you guys get that? Did you guys get that? I don't know. I think it sounded clear. Hold up two fingers if you know what I'm talking about. All right. <laughs> all right, so close enough. All right, so back over here, um, looking at him, right? I know we're doing this up front. No, we, we go to like store stories, but I just kind of want to get into this because I've been off market for a day there. Um, so our possibilities, right? If that happens and this doesn't continue this rotation down and does something like this, he could rotate to this angle in the orange wave projection of the blue you've got now, and he could take off and go and do that again. That's what's possible. Or he's in a bear flag like we see right here and going to finish these projections. That's all you can really plan for. And we have good thresholds with the gaps around this range, right? So let's turn this into a color that's not totally a mindfuck. We'll make you, we'll make you fuchsia. So that's the situation, right? Let's turn off the orange projection. We don't need him since he landed in here. So, Right now, that's what you're watching, right? If this is rotating back down and the VIX is gonna turn up, the blue wave is what we're watching to have happen. If the VIX continues to fade, DXY also continues to fade. It'll allow us to have more breathing room. So that's kind of where we're at at this point. So 
That's the macro in the front end, I guess, huh? Everybody run away. That's all we came for. Um, all right. So let me find your Reddit stuff anyways. So wasn't around on, um, on Friday. Um, but I did see some really kick-ass performances uh, inside of Trading Line. So it was really good to see you guys able to get together and then manage yourselves um, with the you know different levels of skill sets in the room working together. I did uh, take note of that, and I did think that was pretty good to see. Um, how do you guys feel, you know, in chat, in the Acolytes? And I definitely want to say there's definitely been a fall-off in some of you guys who joined it. And again, yeah, remember, just joining a gym and paying a membership and not showing up doesn't doesn't do anything for you. I'm not really a person who wants to have a bunch of people join my gym and not show up. So I'd like to have more winning people, you know, on the show. And so the more of you I get my hands on, the more of you I can help understand uh, the intel on the show and make better use out of it, make better plans. So definitely don't join and vanish. Some of you haven't even met yet, which makes no sense. Um, you know, we do a concept call when we can in there. Um, we're gonna do one this week. And um, probably put a poll up to see if you guys wanna vote on maybe two times of the week we can meet up um, or every other week we meet up and uh, we pick a time for one half of the planet. We'll pick a time for the other half of the planet. And um, for the guys who are Asia, Europe, or the people who are working, not working, or America side, um, you guys pick two times that make sense to catch all of you. And then we can uh, we can go through some concepts and stuff like that again, um, and kind of like even do, you know, review from here and there on uh, on the markets and those group calls. So we'll pick two times, and you guys figure out what sides of the plant you're on and which sides fit in best, and you know we'll vote that to the, to the right spot. Um, cause I definitely don't want to have a bunch of you that haven't gotten to a concept call yet and, uh, staring at a bunch of people winning and, and having it mind fuck you. Um, one thing to think about too, you know, um, about that con that part, I know a lot of folks sit back and they see some dudes go off to these rock star performances and have all these insane R's and that can really make you like dig down in your ego and like while you're having a hard time withdraw because you don't want anyone to know you're not doing that yet. That's not the point of the channel at all. You know, um, you guys should definitely be learning from each other. Uh, some of the folks in the channel have been there three weeks, some have been there three years and more. So learning, you know, from the, everyone is kind of really important. Taking the trades that they put down when they have their end of days and putting them against yours and seeing where your entry logic's off, it's a chance for you to learn from each other and definitely ask questions. The amount of R's you make, remember that like is a way so we can talk about performance without really putting everyone at, against each other in terms of money. And uh, some people have small bank rolls, some people have large bank rolls. We don't want people comparing their dollars to each other, which would draw them into like trying to make nominal gains over like structured returns, which will end up mind fucking you into taking very risky trades and killing yourself in your smaller accounts. We want everyone to just work on, you know, being able to make more than you lose in terms of your R's. Um, but we don't want you to shut down in communication because you're not where everybody else is. Uh, the real reality is the guys who are doing well will learn from the people who are not doing well while they draw you out of a hole. And uh, it's information that goes both ways. It's not a one-sided thing. So I want you to be forthright. If you join the, that community, the whole point is to learn from each other, is to kind of leverage our collective uh, experiences because the, the, the reality is very few people make the valuable choice. So the bulk of us have the information all of us want about what kills us if we're open enough to share it. That's the dynamic we employ in the room. One person's likely having a problem. It's like it's either an anomaly or a whole bunch of people have that problem. That's the rule of the atom of play and leveraging it for our own benefit to find the information we need to fine tune all of what we do to make us like a more efficient audience, you know? So definitely pop out of the corner if you join that channel and, uh, you know, show up so that we can work with you guys. Uh, somebody just asked, can you cover layer twos and oracles, KDA, LFO, API, three band? Hell the fuck no, because I don't know what the hell that is. <laughs> so that's outside my wheelhouse. Somebody on the, in the chat probably knows what the hell you just said, but that looks like fucking Greek to me. Uh, I understand layer twos and fucking crypto, but I don't know what the rest of that stuff was. Um, all right. <laughs> that's a crazy ass question. What the fuck was that? Um... Anyways, all right, so good shit. So it's 8.40, got a good time today. Let me see, did anybody uh, do war stories? I gotta say, you know, I gotta show this off because it's fucking fire. But isn't this wall looking amazing? If you came to this, and this is a stock market show channel or market show channel, whatever, um, isn't this crazy? Wouldn't you be curious what in the world could possibly be going on on this station? I just think you would look. 
This has what to do with the market? Would you look? There's a fucking like Anubis over here. Anyways, digging the uh, the upgrades with the rotation of the studio has definitely been fun for uh, me and Director Bill to create on this uh, full wall surface now. So, hope you guys are digging the vibes. Uh, all right, Reddit, Reddit, Reddit. Let's do War Stories. You guys gave me some War Stories, finally. Um, oh, right. I was supposed to do something here, and I'm such a retardo. So, EU Sessions. Who's this? Nacho Pitan from South America. I love having South American traders. Um, hello all. Nacho here for a, after a long time. I took a break because I wasn't in the right mindset and paying attention. So, I decided to be on track again in November and join the EU Sessions with the Acolytes because it's the best available to trade for me due to my time zone and work schedule. Started the week and we talked about this with the vets and acolytes and it really made sense. Thank you guys again. Don't want to write a book. So this is my trades using Nomics, Logic, and Casual Levels. And yeah, acolytes right now, you know, uh, that's that's run by um, two of our vets from like years. Jester and uh, Matt show up there. They're on EU time zones and a couple other guys over there. Um, so you, you're trading with veterans in that time zone if I'm not awake. I'm kind of not the age bracket to be roaming around at fucking every single time zone anymore. But if I can't show up in the Euro session, I'll show up. But, um, you know, you got seasoned vets that are in the Euro session will gladly help you guys. And uh, like I said, we all learn from each other. So definitely if you want, if you're not in the U.S. session um, and you're on that side of the planet, you know, Australia, whatever, you know, check out um, 3 a.m. openings. These guys will jump in for like the, the DAX and the CAC and stuff like that. And there's tons of opportunities. Like we said, all these at-risk asset classes are correlated on the planet. And with S&P 500 moving overnight, some of the better moves are happening in sessions that most of America is asleep since... Retail stock trading is really very popular in the United States. If you get Dodge retail, you put it where most retail traders aren't, and they aren't in Europe. So let's see. Um, six hours up total this week. Thanks, Kevin Vicky, for providing not only the most accurate intel, but it's most important for the effort you put in daily to help us think and take us out from our comfort zones. What did you do here? Holy shit, that's bright. Uh. What is this? Euro dollars. So he traded currencies. Really good to start seeing we have more currency traders. Isn't that dope? Slowly building our currency trader base. And we have killer intel in there in the uh, market prep channels for euro and pounds. So good stuff. And this is what? Euro again. Oh, look at this. This motherfucker played the FOMC. So I don't really recommend you go in and get murdered in this thing. Um, you missed a couple of these, right? But this is a beast mode short. So, like I told you, right? When you get that fucking crazy ass Anon, you get like a Darth Maul. Like a lightsaber one way and a lightsaber the other way. And you let that happen and you jelly can get an easy flag to place in direction when it's leaving the range. He went for the gusto on the reversal of the 2B up here. That's just crazy notch. That's some crackhead shit, but very nice catch to pull that off. So, looks like you tried it more than once, motherfucker. So... You know, high risk, high reward. As long as you get more R's on the win than your losses, that's that's the business you're in. But generally, don't try to call tops in the super high volatility of this thing. Let it settle down. But nicely done. So, and this is the thing. Not everybody, we don't win every trade. That's the point of having R and R's is that your winners need to pay you back more than all your losses. All right. So, good shit. What does Red say? All I've heard about Alpha Zero is they are a blockchain protocol enabling private smart contracts. API 3 with similar chain link of chain data provider for blockchain applications. I know nothing more than I did five minutes ago. <laughs> I hope that helped whoever asked that question. Um, sure. I do price structures and shit. The fuck are you asking on this show? Uh, <clears throat> the DAO. 
Oh God. <laughs> Worst day of the Dow. With yesterday's levels provided by Kaz on the Dow, right? Because none of us play the Dow. So it's a funny story inside our channel. Like literally, the Dow does thousands of points. Nobody knows anybody says I've hit a thousand points in a Dow. Have you ever heard of that guy? We never heard of that guy. So thought we had some fun and fucking do the Dow. With yesterday's levels provided by Kaz on the Dow, I plan to play the EU session on these ranges because it was strongest of the day compared to the other NYC indexes. The level was triggered and I played the bull rotation out of it first entry. Plan was to play the range between Kaz's levels. Uh, when it became too grindy, I adjusted my stop, which resulted to getting stopped out at minus 0.2R. Second entry, patiently waited for the next structure. It took, I took it and waited patiently for the play to work out. As I resulted, I sold 60% at Kaz's level. Plan was to close position fully, but the wick was too fast and raised the other 40% under the low, which got taken out. Netted 2.4. I now finally can go grab a cup of coffee. Main takeaway, don't adjust stops, let the play play out. It just costs uh, of doing business. Have your entry and exit plan and let it go. Thanks, Eco, for the EU session. Thanks, Kaz and Vicky, for creating an ecosystem this great. Awesome stuff. And it says, well annotated, right? Kind of really good point, right? If you change the uh, risk too early on in the play, then the play isn't the play you planned on. You know, if you risk, you plan to risk a dollar to make $2, and when the play advances like fucking like 10 cents, you change the stop from a dollar to like fucking 25 cents. That's not the same play anymore. And so if it comes back and raids the range of your risk and takes you out and then unfolds into your plan, you're not in it because you didn't want to pay the cost of opportunity, which is your defined risk at the very onset of the plan. So what he's saying is really important. I've done it to myself. I'm sure tons of people in the chat do it to themselves where you kind of try to protect profits too soon or mitigate risk too soon and you end up fucking changing the play and then getting booted out of your great idea. So um, really good thing to, to journal for everybody to read. Um, good shit. That was Karosh from Nebula 4. And then what do we get here? Earnings or anything that was anything we care about? Oh shit, there's a lot of them. Um, Disney World Oxy. Those two you care about, oil and whatever the fuck's going on in discretionary land. Rivian, just because it'll be volatile and there's a lot of fucking money flying around that thing, he'll move, but not a market moving thing. Nothing else. I don't think anything else here means too much. Activision Blizzard, maybe. You give a shit. Nah, don't think any of those things mean too much. Appreciate it, Izzy. And then where is the other one? Events. Let's see what we got. <clears throat> oh, right. Fucking elections. And the elections are on. Hold on. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. The fucking. Damn it. Get off my screen. The beaver moon, motherfucker. Oh, is that, is, that, is that already happening right now, November 3rd? Okay, I think we're in the, the, if we have a lunar eclipse or something like that. Something weird's happening on this day. Let me find it. Lunar eclipse. We'll be on election day. Yeah, there it is. So... If anything else, I think emotions will be running hot on this day. So a fucking election in the United States that resembles kind of the climate of a third world country where it looks like there might be violence around their fucking like, you know, our voting booths and a lunar eclipse, the beaver moon, no less. Um, I don't know. I think it's worth paying attention to what comes next. So interesting things on timings. So um, with the election, um, if the House and Senate both go back conservative, the U.S. government is going to be in fucking total gridlock. It's what puts the president at what's called the lame duck session, where he doesn't have the majority of either side. So him, his ability to push through any of his agenda basically dies. And they'll just basically try to wreck the rest of his presidency to make sure that they win the White House. So it's generally not a good position for the country economically, especially with the Fed and the cycle it's in, that they're going to take steps to try to cripple Biden to make sure he loses the election while the Fed is crippling the economy, while Russia is crippling fucking NATO. 
So it's risk on risk on risk, you know. So depending on how this goes, unless there's a surprise that Democrats keep it too, um, that could have like a, a play on sentiments towards inflation. So um, the Republicans are running on, running on like fighting Biden being the cause of inflation. And so there's definitely major sentiment switches that can happen um, with what happens on the election. So the election is like a news event that could kind of like hold you in check. Today could kind of be a shittyish day. It doesn't, doesn't have to move. It can move. But the, there is event risk with the election and waiting to see the outcome and, and calls for whether or not the, the House flips and, you know, Congress flips. Um, they're also promising to impeach Biden, which would be a whole another fucking shit show to put on the world stage in the middle of a global economic fucking slowdown and have your leader of the free world fucking again, you know, embroiled in shit, which they're going to stay in. Um, so that's a whole lot of stuff. Um, all right. 852, last war story. And then we move on to finish off. Um, Dogecoin play, very nice. Who did this? This is Jester, Winter Soldier. What do you got? 17 R's and Doge. Look at you, crypto crackhead. Let's see what resolution you took this in. Something retarded. Dude, you were really playing Doge on that resolution? What is it? Okay, it's a 30. I'll just say, you were not playing this bitch down in the minutes. Um, Sick. Presented on Vanishing Point. Very much so. So, killer play directly from Vanishing Point. Killer artwork from Vanishing Point 2. Good shit. Oops. Lost it. Lost it. There it is. Money play. Full flag rotation out. Love from the show, which was my target for the take profit. Um, pretty perfect play. <clears throat> as good as it gets. That's some, that's some killer YouTube alpha, baby. Uh, monster shit. Uh, was bringing a show vanishing point and took it from there. Took first cut around six hours to lock in some gains. Decided to take profit at 14.14, which was a level from the show, as can be seen on the screenshot. As always, a small watch list and focus on those assets were key to being able to play this wave. The refresher on logic was also great. Thanks to the show, was able to plan entrance and exit for this play. Perfect shit. It's as good as it gets. Awesome stuff. Pretty fire. Um, all right. So let's see. I know I had something else on my other screen that make sure I need to present. Okay, the market's like a checkerboard right now. All right, I guess I'll just get this up here. Let's see. Um, let's Chrome. Heat map. So pre-market things going to, this is Friday. So if you guys saw, Apple said, um, pre-market. Apple is down pre-market and is an interesting, you know, news story going on with him. Cannot make enough i414s, even with reduced demand for 14, the manufacturing capacities of China are so shuttered that he still can't spit out enough phones. So Apple cannot meet demand because of like supply chain issues. That's pretty crazy. And not meet demand of already uh, a weakened demand product. So pretty interesting to see that Apple is getting hit on that in the morning. And, you know, we've talked about it before where Apple goes in time. So generally does everything else. Apple is saying that it's a, it's a bad omen for everybody that has anything coming out of China. Um, I've got friends in the electron, electrical industry that work with like lighting and retrofitting light fixtures and, you know, efficient energy technologies. And everybody is struggling to get things that are manufactured in Shenzhen or any of those places to fuck out of that place. It's literally crippling the entire world while China continues with the zero COVID policy. So it is now rippling into Apple, the largest company in the entire fucking planet's core product. That's something you definitely want to take note of. So that's what's going on pre-market with him. The rest of it's kind of like, you know, whatever. So I want to start to do this too in the pre-market so we still have like, you know, a morning gauge of what's moving. Nothing in particular. We talked about energy last week. We've seen some really good shit there. And uh, you know, I think while people are kind of waiting for tech to kind of recover, 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 no one's really paying attention to you know, the sneaky energy guys, dirty energy, being structurally very, very healthy. Um, all right. Yes, I did Google North Star stuff. Leave me alone. That's how I plan stuff. All right. So. All right. Um, I need to take a break. <laughs> I got to read this second. Jesus fucking Christ. <sighs> You guys all keep it up with what the fuck I said? I don't remember what I said, but it all sounded pretty important. I hope everybody knows what I said. 
Jesus. Definitely can't keep doing that with some fucking agua. Kaz, do you think Xi is hurting U.S. companies in China on purpose? 100 fucking percent. The U.S. and China are hurting each other as much as they can on purpose while not shooting each other. That's kind of what's going on right now as you enter the world of Vis Miguel and Space Cash. Your main powers that be are playing for control of like the world order. And they're not playing nice. They've been openly sabotaging each other back and forth the entire fucking time. China's weaponizing COVID right now to cripple fucking NATO while fucking Putin pushes into Europe. It's very much a very uh, tactic. I have written more space cash. I am almost done. It's so fucking large. All of this is in there. So I have this fully explained. And I'm looking at the size of that blog. It would literally take me two to three shows to actually read it. So I'm going to put it out there. There's probably stuff in there I probably can't read on YouTube, to be honest. So like, you're going to have to read it. But I'll probably like cover little bits and pieces of it in the show for you guys. But I got, as I see it right now, could get fucking, you know, kanye if I'm not careful. So I'll just be careful. But yeah. So anyways, we'll get to that. Um, all right. Is it the blood moon? I thought it was the beaver moon. Beaver moon's funnier. Well, if it's the blood moon, then that doesn't even sound, that sounds a lot worse, doesn't it? So, my bad. Did I get that wrong? I thought it was a fucking beaver moon. Maybe I just wanted it to be the beaver moon. All right. I guess blood moon's cooler. But still, it, it could have been the beaver moon. But yeah, it's a blood moon. So, okay, so that's like, you know, in history, very ominous. So that's even better. So election day has got the fucking blood moon in the sky. That just sounds all kinds of fucking terrible. And all the election deniers are out. So, you know, could be Vix things. All right, uh, back to macro stuff. So we'd start off with the spy, where he was and all that jazz. Going into this, let's go back and look at what we said. Pre-market, this is our sitch right now. And we are in a bear flag right now, rotation of a bear flag, potential bear flag, pretty obvious, bouncing on a gap. So this is really going to matter if we're going to actually, you know, rotate downwards. This VIX likely stabilizes a bit. Now, there was a, a post out there that I've seen. I don't have it right now, but it referenced the fact that, like, there might have been too much hedging ahead of, um, you know, the event risk that we saw. And so you're able to see the VIX kind of fall with the market falling. And that's something that, you know, rarely happens. But you have seen it happen here, um, which has thrown a lot of people off looking for the VIX pump to go, you know, hand in hand with the market de-risk. The reality was the VIX in the sustained, you know, sustained 30s was pricing in something much crazier than what ultimately ended up unfolding um, from the Fed event. So um, that is something to keep in mind as just the only trigger to watch for market de-risk, that that's what allowed the VIX to kind of correlate with the directionality of the stock market. Um, DXY, which is one of our other guys we like to pay attention to, if he remains weak, this is also good for risk assets as it reprices risk assets in terms of their currency. We've seen this too, you know, we're watching in terms of Euro, so they're going to continue to support this market. Is it here? Uh, right, that this is possible. If the DXY keeps de-risking um, and dropping, he would allow this to hat wall. Okay, that's where I have it. Right, he keeps falling into this bull flag and or you know, here you don't see it the way I've drawn it, it lets you see the possibility of him falling further. If he continues that, the flip of it would be to see the Euro USD actually enter a lower resolution uptrend here and break up through this wave. So this would be this would be what would happen if we likely saw the market you know start to go risk on. And the DXY continues weakness, we'd get to see DXY reflect an uptrend inside of some of these other assets. And the pound likely keeps getting intervened to keep his ass possibly doing the blue wave higher up and make a bigger bear flag or if anything, flat out push for and beyond this. So these are the scenarios right now for DXY where he is, S&P where he is, going into our blood moon week. Um, crypto things. So now that CZ kind of injected the element of fear, into what had been a relatively uh, stronger crypto market, we've seen crypto itself gain a little bit of we in a relative weakness um, from it. So FTT, I know you guys were asking about this thing, All right? And CZ basically market dumped uh, FTT and everything that's touching. And so right now, this is kind of a scary looking place with him kind of introducing that that sentiment. 
Um, I would definitely pay attention to that's a no brain line in the fucking sand if he goes through that. You have to be a rocket scientist to figure out that won't be a good thing. With uh, CZ basically changing the sentiment of the entire market against fucking Sam. So, probably put that like that. I'd pay attention if he fails that, you know, fails the last low that generated his all time high. Um, on, you know, the risk on par, looking at the dollar and stuff, how we looked at it, uh, looking at like ETH. We like to look at him as one of your big cap proxies right now. And we talked about this bull flag in the last show we did on Wednesday, and he pumped a little bit from it, didn't get anywhere. But as far as we're concerned, right, he exited this crazy ass lightsaber range, the expanding range, and is on the top side, rotated this bull flag. And so that's the most bullish thing we have, and we do have this uptrend. So whether the euro can begin to continue his path, and this can continue its path, you know, um, right now you do have something to technically line up with the possibilities of the market going risk on further. Um, let's see. So BTC. He's not your best of breed, but he has also rotated his flag since the uh, last show. Um, well, not since last show. So since November 4th, right? He came up through here. And this move showed up in other things that were a little stronger. Where is he? Uh, where the fuck is it? BNB. Am I blind? What the fuck? Oh. Yeah, BNB. So he was a little stronger. We do the same bull flag on both. BNB was a little stronger. Um, and he ultimately is up here now, like contesting against the next trigger level we've shown you. But the real guy that's really running that most people aren't paying attention to is BNB BTC. Damn it. Which we gave you an OnlyFans that's still doing his thing, right? So, how many of you guys caught this bad boy from OnlyFans? Pretty perfect, the orange squiggle. Hate this fucking color, but it worked. <laughs> Pretty silly, right? So I hope you guys got this playoff of OnlyFans. Those of you that have access to fucking smack B&B around still, um, this should have been an easy one for you. Uh, all right, so B&B things, Doge things, Doge BTC. I guess Elon's talked to talk down the crypto wallet thing for for Twitter, but I don't think he, that means he killed it. Where the fuck? Yeah, so Elon, I guess, you know, kind of like threw cold water on the idea of getting the, the crypto integration into Twitter too soon. But I think right now this technical structure is rotated. He shockwaves out here. And you let him do his thing. You let him create a structure. Let's go down to resolution and see where he's at. So that was kind of crazy. I'd say, you know, he needs to fit in something. That's probably too huge what I did for him. I don't think it means that Doge isn't going to become a tipping point. I just think that Elon's got more in his plate to deal with it, firing like fucking 70% of the company right now, um, finding that people in Twitter internally were selling blue check marks for 15,000. You know, there's like a, a, like a cult inside of the place he's got to fire out. I think a lot of things he thought he was going to be able to do really fast, he's not going to be able to do really fast. And so this is just something that's going to go on the back burner. So we'll let this guy cook, you know? But I think that's what you're watching on Doge. And uh, Elon's just a troll. You already know. <laughs> He's got plans for this thing. So that guy's cooking right there. We saw um, Matic get picked up um, for, by JP Morgan now, along with Meta. So we put this on the show for you guys too. Not bad, eh? Supposedly, you know, potentially higher floor. Remember that pattern we talked about, right? This is exactly it. Person staring at this goes, oh, look, it's fucking getting wrecked. Oops, bull flag, and then fucking wrecked. <laughs> All right, so there's that exact pattern. We drew it right on here for you. It's exactly what was likely to happen with Matic. And when you're rotating time frames, that's the thing, right? You always have to remember to e be willing to evolve your analysis. This was your analysis at this point in time. But once he does this, you know, you have to be able to th imagine that it's possible if he changes his angle of attack and time frame, he could end up looking like that later. This is the thing that like people will get fixed on what their analysis was and try to force price to still fit into it even when price evolves and proves that that analysis has become invalidated. So this is uh, something to kind of show you how to think to kind of see what the forward reality could be and like recognizing like, you know, one trend wave evolving into another resolution of time. 
So hopefully this has been pretty cool for you guys as a lesson and some of you made some some bucks on you know catching Matic. Um all right. That's uh that's that one. Um did BTC, we did DXY, did Dero. I think I did everything that fucking you guys need to see today. You guys feel pretty overloaded? You missed this from Friday, didn't you? Information overload. Um all right, so let me get your symbols. It's 906. I'm endeavoring to not get you off close to the opening bell, so I'm going to try to haul ass and be done. Um, but I think I covered everything I wanted to, to get into here. Uh, let's see. Symbols, Nike, Oxy, IBKFR, FTT, BNB. Nike, Oxy, IBKFR, Nike, Oxy. Nike. Okay, where do we have Nike at? Okay, cool. We did a big old cycle thing on Nike before. I wonder what time frame I did this bitch on. Might have been something like this. Okay, when clone X. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I remember this thing. So, bull flags of bull flags of bull flags of bull flags of bull flag, ain't it? This motherfucker's got some hell of a fucking pattern to his ass. So, let's, uh, I guess let's go clean this guy up. I like this how he looks. I just need to extend the white guy, but let's do a proper trend line to get the real geometry of it. And, hmm, hideous. So that's one angle. So to be really honest with you, right, when you draw this, price rotates through many resolutions of time. Your real downtrend angle for a Nike is really this, right? The, very, the rule of a downtrend is you connect the highest high to the next lowest high without cutting through prices that leads to your lowest lows. It technically, this is the actual highest resolution downtrend that you have. But there are trends within trends. So this is not, so, just so you just understand this, just a proper geometry, this is the correct downtrend of Nike. This is another resolution of times trend in Nike. Just as a memo, right? So we're watching for the first rotation of this angle while he tracks this, you know, this wave right now. Um, and so if he holds anything into this lower floor and rotates, you know, we're looking for something like what he did every other fucking time. And, uh, that's kind of what you're waiting for. So market keeps risking on. Uh, retailers are under a lot of pressure, right? Discretion is not the place right now. Um, but in time, if they manage to rotate this on a slightly bigger res, when the Fed backs off in 2023, this is, you know, the timing I think that you want to watch for it is probably in 2023 when the Fed stops crushing the market or if they stop crushing the market. Oxy, <clears throat> Oxy, like oil things. Um, I don't think this is the right chart for Oxy. Oxy, okay, let's see. Um, Oxy, okay, this is it. Oh, sweet, see, <laughs> we did this shape too. So all the trick moves, I just had to give you guys you know, the graph of the trick moves. The same thing, the same pattern, up, rotate an angle. That's in case he comes out of this big wedge. If he manages to rotate down from here and pulls back, that's what we'd watch for because I think the macro for oil is like, you know, big res, like, you know, rising. Um, we talk about this like on all, like all these big guys are just huge bull flags, like decade long bull flag rotations that we're seeing. Much like we see in, uh, you know, this is a structural similarity, like this mega scale bull flag rotation. It's kind of like in crypto world. We have that going on in, uh, in ETH, right? It's like a large scale bull flag rotation on BTC as he begins to take over the real fucking utility of crypto markets and, you know, as a platform for, you know, games and uh, NFTs and all that. So this is, uh, you know, a, similar to what you see here in the XOP, right? It's a big scale fucking crash cycle bull flag rotation. And uh, right now the zone we care about is getting through here in XOP, OIH, some integrated guys. Uh, fuck, I have one, two different charts, OIH. These guys, right, are lagging um, what you're seeing in XOP. So if they close close that lag and begin to rotate this colossal bull flag, you'll see a lot of motherfuckers in dirty energy just go fucking haywire, like you're seeing right now with Slumberjay, DVN. A lot of these guys we've had on the show, right? They're all these epic bull flags. This is just like pointing to like what fucking Buffett is doing buying 20% of this fucking company, right? The man is 90, like four years old. He's gonna die in this fucking trade. So this is like a legacy play for a resolution of time that he's playing that is going to last fucking, you know, um, long enough to hand over to whoever is taking over the reins from him to kind of like make sure he doesn't make the mistake, you know, of missing this. 
I think I feel like this is kind of like thinking about the way Steve Jobs handed Apple over to Tim Cook with a blueprint of shit that he really just had to fucking kind of be like, you know, just the, the very basic of CEO to carry out the rest of his plan. Um, this is a legacy play for a large resolution of time, I feel. And, you know, I, I think it's because of what you're seeing in Europe. If uh, Buffett's valued like I valued it, this energy crisis is going to get a lot, lot fucking worse. Um, so, you know, a lot of things look fucking insane in energy, like the CVX, like there is a bull market always somewhere, right? While people are staying at tech, de-risking through the fucking pavement, nobody wants to fucking trade oil. They're still waiting on fucking hitting crypto this or fucking like Apple that or Facebook or fucking whatever, you know, big tech stock is, is popular to them. And there is a bull fucking market in dirty energy right now that is going absolutely fucking haywire. So that's uh, Oxy. And then IBKR, IBKR is Interactive Brokers. So I've uh, been paying attention to these guys, Schwab, Interactive Brokers. Let's go back down and res. Some big res bull flags. This is a projection we made on Schwab a while ago. Remember when we made this? Look, it's almost filled in exactly like we said. So back when he was up here, you guys could probably find the show we did this in. It was back here in, in the early part of the year. We said he would need a flag like that and probably do something like this or like this and then rotate and then possibly go back into alignment. He's actually at the point, he looks like he's trying to start that rotation. A bit bigger of a flag than we thought. And you can just check this angle right here, right? He's breaking and rotating that angle. So that's Schwab. That's, and uh, IBKFR is more bullish than he is. So that looks pretty good. Brokers have been strong. Been watching those guys. Uh, what the fuck? Fuck my life. Goldman Sachs, he's rotating the same flag. We had drawn that in before. Morgan Stanley, the flag got much bigger than when we drew this. It was back in the day. Um, so you can see that's happening right there. IAI, which is kind of like your index that contains those guys, all beginning a rotation as we move to industrial and financial, leading the market away from tech. So um, definitely worth something that's worth paying attention to, IBKR. All right. I think I've got two minutes before I got to be off here. Director Vales is telling me I'm running out of time, so what else can I squeeze in? VIX compared from 2008 to now. Um, I don't think I pulled that side by side up too fast. I did FTT USDT already. I'm going to squeeze XMR in here. I don't, I don't have time to pull it side by side right now because I got less than like a, a minute before Director Vales says I got to sign off. Um, XMR USDT. Uh, not that guy. XMR USDT. Fucking shit. I never know which exchange it's on. I've already done this a million times. Why don't I put in the fucking list of shit over here? Ah, oh, you motherfucker. XMR, BTC. Where do I fucking have this TA at? XMR, BTC. One sec. I do this. There it is. Sweet Jesus. I gotta fucking stop doing this. Alright, so... Watching XMR, BTC, um, him, like most of the other guys with BTC dominance being kind of like on the weak side and staying there, which is allowing some of your cryptos to mark up with some strength, you need this for it to be risk on behavior in the market. And that's why I said this is one of the signs that there's still some potential risk seeking behavior in the market is that BTC dominance hasn't turned up very strong. Once he's strong, you're getting a crypto you know, de-risk across the board. And you see USDT.D be strong, but it really hasn't cracked that last emotional barrier and BTC dominance hasn't rotated up. Those two things happen, we're getting fucking smoked. So right now, while this is weak, you have a lot of stuff on BTC that's strong. Some stuff is stronger than others though, right? So BNB BTC is best of breed. He looks like this, he looks ridiculous. Um, ETH BTC, you know, looks like this. Um, XMR BTC, is kind of beginning that rotation. And so that means that his dollar-based asset isn't gonna be the best of breed right now. He's kind of a laggard. And you don't generally see the, the dark coins be really strong in a risk on cycle in crypto. They're kind of like, you know, counter, um, counter cycle. So this is a, I can't find my fucking XMR chart, XMR USD. Fucking kill me. I don't know where it is. I know I have the USD one done already in some fucking exchange, um, whatever. I wanted you to see this looks just like fucking what you saw with Litecoin, right? It 
Damn it. I don't know what the fuck. I don't know where my chart for Litecoin is. Litecoin. Man, I can't figure out where my graph for Litecoin is. There he is. God damn it. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say this whole time. So, all right. So, XMR is dual bull flags you see right here. Right? These two dual bull flag rotations you're looking at is kind of what you're seeing also reflected in XMR USD on Polynex. So, he's like not the best of breed, even though you're focused on XMR USD. There's other USD guys that are stronger right now, like BNB and ETH. If there's a counter like wave in the markets, you're still not really going to want to play XMR USD in the USD market. He is a good idea in the BTC market, but for right now, I think you know it's like it'd be like like focusing on LTC while missing a whole bunch of other gems that are moving out there. All right, holy shit, that's as much as I can get in there. Yeah, I use Polynes because he has the data going back forever, so you can see the dual bull flags of like the old cycle. You can't see them like on you know some of the New York exchanges, so. Um, the historic data from that is pretty necessary to kind of see the, the cycles of 17 and right now in those graphs. So, um, good shit. Uh, enjoyed the healthy turnout for the show. I hope that some of the people in the community are waking back up and popping back up. I um, hope everybody that's new or if anybody's new that came to the show and enjoyed what you saw and stick around. Um, learn some things you can apply on charts. Everything you see on the graphs here, you should try drawing them on your shit and kind of aging them over time. That's one of the things that really teaches you stuff is like not just doing one analysis and sitting there and seeing if it just, I hope it just happens. Like evolve your chart, right? Evolve with the unfolding of pricing. You'll start to learn it intimately. Um, that's what we do in the show is we kind of age things along in each asset class to kind of keep us in an objective mind state about where we are, you know, in the wave. So, um, so I miss you guys Friday. Hopefully we made up for it today. Um, stay safe out there, everybody. We'll catch you on the flip. Watch out for that blood moon and those high emotions on Tuesday. I'll see you Wednesday. Peace out. Welcome to Wintronomics TV. Your stream will begin shortly.